Hesse's law. I guess the first thing we need to ask ourselves is what is Hesse's law? As laws go, it's a very simple one. Hesse's law says that in a chemical reaction, the energy change in moving from reactants to products is the same energy change no matter how you get from your reactants to your products. Take either the direct route or the indirect route, the overall energy change is the same. So for example, let's say that going from A to D produces an enthalpy change of minus 100 kilojoules, then going by this route would also add up to minus 100 kilojoules. Let's say for example that this step AB has a value of minus 10 kilojoules. Let's say that the BC step has a value of minus 40 kilojoules. Then it follows that since this adds up to minus 50 and the whole thing has to be minus 100, this step must be minus 50 kilojoules. It seems very simple. The beauty of Hesse's law, however, is it lets us calculate an enthalpy change which might be otherwise very hard to find out. Let's turn the clock back. Let's suppose we knew that enthalpy value and we knew this enthalpy value and we wanted to find this one but we couldn't find it by experiment. How can we find the value of this reaction? How can we work out the enthalpy change for this reaction? By using Hesse's law we can see what it must be. This would have to be minus 40 even though we couldn't prove it by experiment. Now, let's take an example of a Hesse's law calculation. Let's suppose, for example, you're asked to work out the enthalpy change for a chemical reaction. Let's come up with a chemical reaction which, in practice, is actually very hard, if not impossible, to do. How about this one? Imagine taking the elements carbon and hydrogen and trying to get them to join together to form butane. And for reasons that we're not going to, we want to know what the enthalpy change for this reaction would be. Well, first of all, better balance the equations. We start with four carbons, there they are. Better start with ten hydrogens. Why could we not simply take carbon and hydrogen and join them together to make butane as an experiment? Well, the answer is, there's no guarantee that the carbon and hydrogen will join together all that readily. And even if they did join together, there'd be many other hydrocarbons we might get instead. It'd be impossible to get just this one product from these reactants. So here's a chemical reaction whose enthalpy change can only be found using Hesse's law. So, how do we go about doing this? It's important to clearly identify what we're trying to do. What comes next is really a construction job. We're going to try to build up this equation from some simple data. And the simple data usually involves burning, or as chemists like to call it, combustion. Now, let's see if I've got my values here. You're often asked to use burning data to do this calculation. What we're going to try to do is to assemble carbon and hydrogen and butane, I didn't mention that that was butane earlier on, assemble this equation. Let's take, for example, some information about burning carbon. Now, burning carbon, the combustion of carbon, is a very simple little reaction. There it's there. When carbon burns, we assume it forms carbon dioxide. And if we look at the data book, on page 9, we'll find that enthalpy change for this reaction is minus 394 kilojoules per mole. Minus 394. However, we want, ultimately, to produce four carbons. We're trying to construct this equation. So, what we're going to do later is to multiply this equation by 4 to create these four carbons. Let's leave that just now. Let's look at the hydrogen. Again, if we look up the data book, we'll find information about burning hydrogen. 
When hydrogen burns, it joins with oxygen, and this time it forms water. A little balance equation would be that. And according to the data book, the value is minus 286. Again, why do we need this equation? Because that hydrogen there is going to be used to create these five hydrogens there. We're going to ultimately have to multiply by five. You'll see then, we've dealt with the carbon, we've dealt with the hydrogen, we need to deal with the butane. And we'll deal with the butane in the same way as the other two, namely, use some burning data. So let's write down an equation for butane burning. Here's butane. When butane burns, it forms carbon dioxide and water. The carbon joins with oxygen and the hydrogen joins with oxygen. If we start with four carbons, we finish with four carbon dioxides. If we, if we start with ten hydrogens, we finish with five waters. Eight oxygens there, plus a further five, that's thirteen oxygens. If we've started with thirteen oxygens, we get a six and a half. Now according to the data book, when you burn one mole of butane, the energy produced is minus two, eight, seven, seven. So all the data is in place, all the pieces are in place. It's now our job to use this. Let's cut some corners to save some time. We want four carbons. If I was to multiply this equation by four, yes, it would create the four carbons. It would produce four oxygens. It would produce four carbon dioxides. But most importantly of all, I'll have to multiply this energy change by four. But by multiplying this equation by 4, I've created the 4 carbons, which are going to go there. Let's do the same here. Let's, let's turn the hydrogen into 5 hydrogens. Well, obviously, to produce 5 hydrogens, I'll need to multiply by 5. If I multiply this equation by 5, I can create these 5 hydrogens. It'll also create 2.5 oxygens, 5 waters, but most importantly of all, the enthalpy change is multiplied by 5. Now, the most tricky part, what do I do with this final equation? I want this butane to be there. It's on the wrong side. I'll have to flip this round. I'll have to turn this equation round. Now, let me do that. Let me turn this equation round and see what we get. I'll put the reactants on the right and the products on the left. So I'm going to take these substances and put them over here. I'm going to put the butane and oxygen on the right hand side. The point being, I'm putting the butane where it needs to be. What does that do to the end of the change? It changes the value. Instead of being a negative exothermic step, it's endothermic. Let me just tidy this up. Now, I've turned that round. So it's now a positive value. So effectively, I've turned this equation backwards. Now, if I've done this properly, when I add these equations together, I'll end up with that. But more importantly, when I add the values together, I'll end up with that, the missing value. You'll notice that if I was to add these together, certain things cancel. For example, the five waters on the right of the arrow cancel with the five waters on the left of the arrow, and that's good, because we've got water in here. Likewise, four plus two, that's six and a half oxygens here, will cancel with the six and a half oxygens there. And that's good, because we don't want oxygen in this equation. Is there anything else which will cancel? Um, let's see. Yes, the carbon dioxide, the four CO2s there, will cancel with the four CO2s there. So what are we left? We'll have the four carbons, which we want, five hydrogens, which we want, turning into a butane, which we want. In other words, if I was to add this equation together, I'd get four carbons plus five hydrogens turning into butane, but it's more important that I add up the numbers correctly. If I multiply this by four, this by five, and make sure this is a positive value, and add these numbers together carefully, be silly to lose marks at this stage, I get the final answer, which is negative 129. Now I must put the units in now. Kilojoules 
per mole. You must end up with the units. You can leave the units out in the course of the calculation, but you must show the units at the end. So there it is, a typical Hesse's Law calculation. The point is, you must have it clearly in your mind what you're trying to do. Clearly establish the chemical reaction you're trying to solve. Set down the data clearly and then manipulate the data so as to achieve your target. But remember, the most important thing of all is to make the appropriate changes to the values. The answer to this question is not the equation. The answer to the question is a number.